One of the viewers of our show named Nick T sent us something that he thought would be pretty cool to cover. And when he talked about it, I was pretty sure it was a gag, but it ended up being real. This here is called the Super GB Booster by Innovation, and it's for the PlayStation. What does it do? Well, let's take a look. This is the PlayStation, the very first video game system released by Sony back in the mid-90s. One of the console's most notable features is its utilization of compact disc technology. While it wasn't the first video game system to make use of them, it really was a system that made them popular. So it's no surprise then that if you were to ask any gamer out there what they thought the PlayStation was known for best, they'd probably say optical disc-based games. But did you know, at some random point during the height of the PlayStation, a company came around trying to put cards cartridge games onto the system. And not just any cartridge games, games from their direct competitor Nintendo. But it wouldn't be NES games, or Super Nintendo games, or even Nintendo 64 games. No, they went a completely different way. They decided to utilize Game Boy games. As you can probably imagine, this device is neither sponsored nor endorsed or produced by Nintendo or Sony. And that's pretty clear why. I imagine if either one of the companies attempted to do something like this, it probably would have been a legal headache. Initially, what made this device so interesting to me was that you could actually play those Game Boy games on a home console. This is something you would have seen on the Super Nintendo years prior, but you wouldn't see anything like this on the Nintendo 64, at least officially supported by Nintendo. Because this company here that made this device for the PlayStation also made another one for the Nintendo 64. Now, I'm not gonna get into the Nintendo 64 one because I don't really care. Playing Nintendo games on a Nintendo console isn't really that interesting. What I'm interested in is playing actual Nintendo games on a Sony console, cause folks, that's weird. The box is pretty nondescript and just says that it can play Game Boy and Game Boy Color games. All you need to know is that it's called the Super GB Booster and it's by Innovation. And the device itself feels very flimsy, hollow, and likely was incredibly cheaply made. How it works is you plug it up directly to the parallel I.O. port on the back of a PlayStation 1. Now what's interesting about this is not every PlayStation 1 out there actually still has this port. The newer models eventually got rid of it because Sony really wasn't using it, and other companies were, like folks that were making the Game Shark and stuff like that. But wait, wait, before you go to check if you have a parallel I.O. port on the back of your PlayStation, or if you're looking online to get one yourself, maybe don't. Watch how these games play first. To use the Super GB Booster, first you have to make sure that you don't have any optical disc inside the PlayStation because, well, it doesn't need one. All it needs to do is be plugged up to the back of the PlayStation itself. Also, you need to make sure you have a controller plugged in because, surprise, surprise, you need to actually control the video game. Outside of that, though, that's all you need. So let's try out the very first game we're going to see, Metroid 2 Return of Samus, a classic that I'm sure all of you are familiar with. And... It, mm, it, mm, that's not that's not right. That definitely isn't the game. Okay, let's try something else. Uh, Kirby's Dreamland, and again, it, that's uh, that's the same game for some reason. Okay, let's try uh, Super Mario Land. Uh, okay, I'm starting to see a pattern here. Maybe we'll get lucky with Spider-Man Two. Uh, nope, there it is again. Uh, huh. Well, l let me explain to you what you're seeing right now, because believe me, I was confused. All of these cartridges were tested and do run on other platforms, but for some reason, the Super GB Booster just can't run the cartridges. And I'm not quite certain why, but regardless of the reason, every time you would turn on a cartridge that it can't run, it would go to this game called Rebound Mission, which is actually built into the Super GB Booster itself. In fact, if you were to run the Super GB Booster without any cartridge inside, it would just play this game. Now, now, you might think it's pretty cool that a game is just pre-built into the thing, but it's not a very good game. The first thing that came to my mind when I saw this game was, wow, this looks like a kid drew the background. It just looks like it was made with crayons or something. And the game itself? pretty bare bones. There's really not a lot going on here. You control the paddle at the bottom and all you're trying to do is shoot balls up to the paddle at the top. And you have to avoid the things in the center like flying pterodactyls and other things in the middle that just get annoying after a while. And if you don't avoid those things, the ball will get bounced back at you and hurt you. That's the game, and it just keeps going for a really long time. I really did try and beat it, but after about, I'd say, 30 minutes, I just really didn't want to continue anymore because it didn't feel like they were really going anywhere with this concept. 
Now look, folks, nobody bought this thing originally to play this stupid game here. They bought it because they really wanted to play their Game Boy games on their PlayStation. And when the majority of our games didn't work, it just made me feel like we were looking at something that was broken. But finally, one cartridge eventually did work, and that was Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Fall of the Foot Clan. Now once this game starts up, you'll notice something immediately. There's no sound effects or music whatsoever. Even Rebound Mission is completely played silent, and well, that's just the way this thing is, I guess. They really couldn't get that sound effect stuff to work for the Game Boy. What you can do, though, is no joke, you can take a music CD, put it in the PlayStation, and this will run a music CD in the background while you play. So if you're really ambitious and you really wanted it to happen, you could probably get the soundtrack to this game from the Game Boy itself and burn it to a music CD and play it that way. But you shouldn't, because it should just work straight from the cartridge. Having no audio play from the original cartridge may be an issue, but at least the game can still play properly, right? Well, no, it doesn't do that either. As soon as you play the game, you'll notice a ton of visual issues that are not in the original release of the game. On the Game Boy, it doesn't really look like this, having these weird flashy images and stuff like that. And on top of that as well, the game seems to run slower. This is just trying its best to play Game Boy games, but its best just simply isn't good enough. Even though we basically couldn't play any other games on here, this one alone was proof positive that even if any of the other ones worked, they likely weren't gonna look good anyway. So because the games aren't running very well and you're obviously gonna need some help, how about entering some cheats? Well, you're lucky, there's a cheats menu on here. I don't know what any of these codes mean, they're probably GameShark codes, but I'm not really gonna look into it because there is another option here called Trainer, and Trainer is supposed to be the area where you get all the cheat codes from. But you know what's funny about Trainer? It doesn't actually work. Every option menu that you have on here to access the trainer menu so you can go through a list of games cannot be accessed. Now I assume what was supposed to happen is that you would get some random Game Boy game, put it into the Super GB booster, and go to the trainer section, and then maybe it would identify what the cartridge is, and it would limit the list of available codes to just that game. That way it could actually fit on the screen. This way though, it tries to run, it looks like over 8,000 codes at the exact same time, and the thing just can't make it work. So you can't access any of the codes and it makes this option completely pointless. So by this point, nothing on here really works all that well. Besides the CD player, which actually doesn't work as well as the built-in CD player on the PlayStation, so I'm not even gonna give them credit on that one. But what does work, at least a little bit, is the palette option. From this menu, you're capable of switching up any of the colors on any game that you play, which is kind of nice because all Game Boy games that you start up on here start up in grayscale mode. So I was just assuming that this would be a very easy way to switch out colors to whatever I really felt like, but it was anything but easy. It's incredibly difficult. Now, if I had personally designed this, I would have had a nice big palette of colors that you could pick from and select on the screen to the left so that you can choose which colors get switched out. But that's not how this works. There's this awkward formula where you take three buckets of paint that you're supposed to mix together to change colors and I just, I really can't figure this out. It never really seemed to work properly and all they had to do was make it simple, but they couldn't even do that. They found the most complex way imaginable to switch colors out in your games. Why would they do any of this? On the Super Nintendo, if you happen to use a Super Game Boy, they gave you the ability to switch out colors on your games. It's really not that difficult of a concept. And even though that happened years earlier, they were unable to basically replicate what Nintendo did on a much more powerful piece of hardware. The PlayStation is leagues above the Super Nintendo, but they simply can't get it to work properly. This is just shocking. Look, I could get if they were trying to make something really quick, but it almost looked like they were trying to put a little bit of effort in here, but not a thing on here manages to work properly. Can you imagine how successful this would have been had it actually worked well back in the day? On the Super Nintendo, it was a big deal to be able to play Game Boy games on TV. And by the time the Nintendo 64 rolled out, Nintendo offered no official solution for that system to play Game Boy games on your television. And let's not forget that at the time, the Nintendo 64 was struggling to do well, where the PlayStation just continued to keep selling millions and millions of units. By the end of the PlayStation's lifespan, there was just so many people that owned the console, and having a very easy to use device like this to play Game Boy games on your TV may have been a big deal, but they just didn't do it well enough. And because of that, this thing is just useless to everyone. Yes, you might find one of these out in the wild, but I simply 
definitely can't recommend it, because unless you're looking to play that rebound game, you might as well just be throwing it out. So that's the Super GP Booster, something that I don't think anyone really needs in their collection. And the fact that it only worked with one game would have been great if it could have just run that one game well. But Nick, I want to thank you for sending it in because, well, we love looking at stuff like this. And there is one of these out there for the Nintendo 64, and maybe someday in the future we'll take a look at it, and it'll probably be just as bad.